Hi everyone and welcome back to ASFC Chemistry. I'm going to go through with you now the Depth in Chemistry Practice Paper Question 7, which is at the back of the red past paper pack if you go to Ashton Sixth Form College. The reason I'm going through this is because it's a pretty good example of the new style of practical question that's going into the Depth in Chemistry exam, also the Breadth in Chemistry, but we're more likely to see it in the Depth in Chemistry exam. And it's one of those that's now marked by your level of response. Now for this, there are three different levels that you can get, possibly as an answer, and each level has two markings options. For instance, the top level, it's not automatic that you're going to get six. You could actually end up with five. And in order to get the six, you've really got to communicate your answer effectively, which means have a clear layout, lots of scientific language, and all the correct steps as well. If you gave all the correct steps, but you didn't give as full an impression of what you were doing as you could do, you'd end up with the five, not the six. If you started making mistakes or just generally leaving stuff out, you end up with three, four, one or two. So, reading the question to begin with, we can see that we are given three alcohols and we're told that they're structural isomers of each other. Now, this is a primary alcohol, this is a secondary, and this is a tertiary. And we've been told that we have access to normal lab equipment and apparatus, all the quick fit stuff, and an infrared spectrometer as well. We've been told to describe a plan that we could use to identify them, but notice that it actually says to use the same experimental setup and method. So that means we can't just say, oh, for this one do that, the other one do a different method. We have to make sure we use the same method each time. We've also been told in two simple bullet points that we should use equations using only structural formula. I wonder how many people notice that when they first do the question. Structural is just like it's been shown up here and a description of how you will identify the three alcohols from observations and results. So let's have a go through. First thing, I'm going to use some bullet points to summarize what I do at the start. I'm definitely going to use a reflux as my one method. Make sure that you only use one method just to reiterate that and definitely go for a reflux here. The reason is you've got three different classifications of alcohol. Now, first off, to get it out of the way, the tertiary won't actually oxidize, and so we can ignore that. And then we've got to try and figure out how would we tell the difference between a primary and a secondary. Well, if we use the distillation, they would form an aldehyde and a ketone, respectively. Now, the problem is aldehydes and ketones are structural isomers of each other, and infrared spectra isn't going to help us easily differentiate between those two. However, if we reflux, the secondary alcohol will still form a ketone but the primary alcohol will form a carboxylic acid, a completely different functional group. So I'm definitely using a reflux, and just to describe what the reflux is, don't forget there is actually a video on the channel for the difference between a reflux and a distillation, but I've pointed out here that it, the quick fit condenser is attached directly to the pear shaped flask, or you can say round bottom flask here, and I'm going to apply heat with a hot water bath, not a Bunsen burner, because we've got lots of flammable reagents. I've also chosen to point out here, because it has asked for any chemicals, that the oxidizing agent is acidified potassium dichromate before I move on with going through each of the alcohols one at a time. So first one to begin with, this is the primary alcohol structural formula reacting with two of the O in square brackets. Now remember, this O in square brackets represents all of this oxidizing agent, but we don't put all that there, we just use the O in square brackets. I need two moles of it, believe it or not, that is a two, just chucked in there. And I form this carboxylic acid, and we can tell it's a carboxylic acid because it's got the COOH at the end, which is the CO in the structural formula of the carboxylic acid. CO. We also get some H2O. Good rule of thumb, as we'll see for the next one as well, is whenever you react an alcohol, you should make some H2O. That's a good tip for the year one course. What we can say and summarize this, the primary alcohol will oxidize to a carboxylic acid and the color change is orange to green. And that's because of the acidified potassium dichromate just here. Infrared data will show that both the C double bond O and the OH acid, because that's different from the alcohol one, peaks. That would be quite broad. You could mention that as well. And if we wanted to, there weren't any actual marks for this, but if you wanted to quote the numbers from the data sheet, you could do. Next one is the secondary alcohol. So here's our secondary alcohol structural formula. I've added in brackets just to make this OH stand out a bit more and it's perfectly fine to do that. Use just one mole of the oxidizing agent and it forms this ketone just here. And again, the H2O I said would see again. The secondary alcohol will oxidize to a ketone 
and the colour change is orange to green once again. However, this time, infrared data will show a peak for the C double bond O, but not the OH. So that immediately now makes it different from the previous set of results. Final one, the tertiary alcohol. So here's our tertiary alcohol formula, and I've pointed out that it will not oxidize and therefore will remain orange. Infrared data will show no C double bond O peak, but will show the OH alcohol peak on its own instead. And just to remind you that the OH alcohol peak is different, once again, from the OH acid peak. And OCR in the past have been very picky about that. They want you to make sure that you understand that there is a difference between those. Again, you could quote numbers if you wanted to, but there weren't actually any marks for that. It may be best on the day to play it safe and quote them. I hope that takes you through the question, which I'm just going to leave you with here, reminding you that it was a leveled response. This is brand new to the specification, so you won't find this kind of question in any of the past papers. And don't forget, there is a video on the practical playlist, which you can go to straight away now if you want, which takes you through the difference between a reflux and a distillation. Until next time, happy revising.